Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenge of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane, and with Maddie recovering from a 20k run, uh, as he trains for his, uh, his marathon later on in the year, it's just myself and Ryan. How are you going, mate? Hey, good, mate. I'm uh, Hola de Espana. I'm um, enjoying myself in Spain at the moment in uh, La Ciudad de Madrid. So, with um, a thing for for you being a much bigger fan than I am, but the uh, El Clasico seems to be a bit of a thing over here. Yeah, the so, El Clasico, I mean, um, El Clasico, of course, being Real Madrid versus Barcelona, which takes place in what? It's a it's a pretty fluid structure over in Spain with regards to soccer. It's usually to start at a particular time, but it never actually starts in. It usually kind of pushes on into the evening. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think it's supposed to start at eight o'clock tonight on uh, on Sunday here. So. There'll be uh, there'll be a lot of buzz for that, but I'm um, I'm here for an upcoming study week at learning all things international business. But there's a lot of like you, um, a lot of people that I do uh, B school with, uh, massive massive soccer fans, so they are pumped for tonight. Yeah, it's a good time to be there. She's I, I was actually in Spain when Spain the the night that Spain won the World Cup, and that was amazing. So I imagine being in yeah Madrid. Uh, when Barcelona come to town, uh, would be right up there as well. But only if Madrid. Win, yeah, there's of a lot of people around, <laughs> and I think there'll be some upset people if uh, if Madrid lose for sure. But it's it's definitely um, it's got a buzz, which is pretty cool. Very nice. Well, that is what we're going to talk about tonight. Actually, sports events which we've been to live, uh, which are memorable sports events, or I guess ones we really remember. And this kind of came up when we were exchanging WhatsApp messages a few weeks ago, uh, because I was actually at the MCG when Shane Warne took his 700th wicket on Boxing Day. Uh, obviously, with his death a few weeks ago, we were exchanging messages about about that. And now I remembered that I was about three rows back, pretty much behind his arm when he took his 700th wicket. That would have been incredible. I mean, yeah, I think uh, if anyone that was Australian um, a couple of weeks ago came, it was a massive shock and still sort of reeling over it. But, um, I mean, what what a what an event to be at in the MCG, the 700 wicket. It would have just been, what, 90,000 people just erupting. Yeah, because it was England as well. It was day one, Boxing Day test against England. It was a pretty dreary morning, actually. It was kind of showery. I lived in South Bank at the time, so I walked across the ground uh, kind of in drizzle. And it wasn't the nicest day weather-wise. Typical sort of Melbourne Boxing Day a lot of the time, to be honest. And uh, it was literally the only highlight of the day, really, was Shane Warne taking his 700th wicket, which was which was amazing. He did his little uh, yeah, run out to mid-wicket, sort of, you know, little bit of a jig or something, which was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, the place erupted. I uh, would have, but it, I imagine like the anticipation uh, leading up to that wicket would have been like every ball just would have been like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> like just waiting. Yeah, I, and I've always preferred watching Australia bowl than bat. I actually don't really like watching Australia bat at the cricket. I really have always enjoyed watching the bowlers, uh, you know, back you know, McGrath, Warren, you know, before that, Craig McDermott and, and people like that. So I've always enjoyed watching the bowlers. So to be there, I was hoping we'd bowl, which is unusual on day one of a test. I'm not sure if we... Uh, won or lost the toss, but we happened to be bowling. So it was perfect for me to be there. And then, yeah, to see the 700th is something I'll, I'll probably always remember. Yeah, that's an awesome one. I've been to, I mean, those Boxing Day tests are just amazing. I've been to um, a couple myself. I think I saw Alistair Cook get a 200 there. I saw David Warner when he like just smashed 100 off, you know, the first session. Um they're pretty. They're pretty special, especially when Australia is playing England. It's a good, uh, it's a good atmosphere to be at live, definitely. Yeah. So outside of that, the the, the cricket. Well, I haven't been to many cricket matches. I've been a very. I've probably been to a handful of you know days of cricket in my life. One of them happened to be that seven hundredth uh, wicket. I, I quite enjoy cricket. I find it maybe one of the more difficult sports to maybe sit there and watch all day, especially if you're not partaking in the. Uh, the booze, which makes a day go a little bit quicker and a bit more interestingly. Uh, but outside of that, the other probably the, my biggest sport sports memory of seeing a, a, a live sports match was the the soccer World Cup qualifier back in 1997 to get into the 1998 World Cup for Australia. 
Australia didn't even win. We didn't, it was a drawn match. We didn't get through. So it was devastating at the end. It was a night Peter Hall ran onto the, uh, ran onto the MCG and, you know, got caught up in the net and it was like sort of 10 minutes taking him off. But I remember walking in there and I was on the, I think it was in the first tier and I went with my dad and we're in the first tier and we're in pretty much the first or second on the first tier. There's 85,000 people there. And it's because it's, you know, soccer and we're playing Iran, 85,000 people were all support, the whole crowd was supporting Australia. So before the match, it, Honestly, I can still I still get goosebumps thinking about it. It felt like the MCG was moving because everyone was singing and you know jumping and dancing around to the sort of same cheers, all for the same team. That would have been unreal. I mean, disappointing that yeah, Australia didn't get up there, but that would have been a feat in itself. Yeah, yeah, it was, and that, that's probably my that's probably would probably be my number one. Like the Shane Warne and being there for the seven hundred was fantastic, but I was I was super into soccer. I would have been eight, seventeen or eighteen years old. I was massively into soccer at that point of time. To go there with my dad, you know, with eighty five thousand people cheering for Australia, and just experience like that sort of partisan sort of uh, atmosphere was amazing. That would have been unreal. I think. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know that I've been to anything where I've been to things where definitely like the team that I'm supporting is the one that's got the most fans there. But I don't think I've been to anything where it's just like unanimously one supporting side. It's definitely worth experiencing sometime. Like, I don't know, it has to be, it's, it's hard because cricket's usually pretty well represented. To go to Australia, India, and India is fantastically mm. represented. Sri Lanka is fantastically represented. England's fant- fantastically represented. Like cricket's a difficult sport to kind of get that sort of, you know, really one-eyed uh, environment. So it's the same with sport. Like, you know, your team played my team today at the MCG and, you know, the crowd was probably split 50-50. There's never that sort of, it's, it's very hard to get that one-way uh, sort of traffic. So that was probably what was really special about that night. Yeah, that would have been. I think, um, yeah, I mean, Melbourne does it phenomenally well and I really hope it comes back strongly following the whole COVID situation but I mean even with the Melbourne Cup like I've been to one of those and and that's a sporting event in itself but I think the most memorable one that I've got would definitely be an AFL one Um, I was was able to get tickets to the grand final I've only been to one but it's it's a fantastic experience Um, and it was 2016 Western Bulldogs versus Sydney when the Western Bulldogs won for like the first time in 50 years or something and um and the great thing about that game was it was not over until about the last five minutes so and I think they're the they're the best sporting events that I've ever had live like I've got memorable ones of just in any match with only 10,000 20,000 people like a North Melbourne versus St Kilda or whatever, that that gets right down to the wire, yeah. and you just you just love those, and that's the beauty of live sport. I mean, the other one for me, I think, is was there when Brent Harvey broke the record for the most games in the AFL, four hundred twenty-seven. That was that was pretty special. But the other live sporting event that is just unreal that really stands out for me. Not even a sport that I like either, which is what makes it really cool. Um, I found myself in LA in 2018, um, a couple of days before I had to go do some work and do this conference. I think it was like the very first day, had no plans to do any of this, walked into a bar, started chatting to some Americans and then found out it was like um, the first game of the whatever their finals are over there. Uh, for baseball and the LA Dodgers were playing at Dodgers Stadium. Oh, in the World Series. In the World Series, yeah. And these guys were just like, oh, if you can get there, you know, it'd be great, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, with their help, I like snagged a hot, like complete bleachers ticket right in the background. It would have been like one of the one of the last ones where I think they had a buddy who was like missing it and they got the ticket for me or something. And um, so so I went to this baseball game 50 60,000 people in this stadium and just the atmosphere like 
I don't even understand how baseball works half the time. Um, it's probably like non people from cricket places. Um, it's like Americans watching cricket. They just got no idea how the game is played. But I think, um, yeah, it was that atmosphere. And I don't know what it is about the US and how they do it. But geez, it was incredible. And like, I don't think I'll ever forget that. And I can't even remember what the result of the game was, to be honest. But um, just that feeling and you just felt like you were locked in this stadium that just had all this energy and probably like, you know, 80, 90,000 people just going for Australia in the soccer. But it was, um, yeah, that was an unreal experience. That would have been amazing. Like you say, especially considering that like, it's not a sport you are you know, really into, like you could, I think in that instance, you can probably take, you can take the, and it wasn't a team you were supporting either so much. So you can actually take a lot of it in where if you're kind of going there to support a team, you maybe get caught up in the game and if you lose, it maybe tarnishes your memory of it. But to go there as a neutral and just be able to take in, take well, essentially as a neutral, I'm probably supporting the Dodgers at the time, but to be able to take it all in, I think would be would have been awesome. Yeah, I think I bought an LA Dodgers cap or something when I was there and uh, they had like one of their big beers and a hot dog um, to go full, full American. But it was, yeah, just like to be able to take it in. And I think even the the uniqueness of it, like two hours before the game, I wasn't going to the game, if that makes sense. Like yeah. just that spontaneity. spontaneity of, oh, that's what I'll do tonight. That sounds amazing. And then you do it and it's just, yeah, it's a bit of a surreal experience. Well, it's better than the time you, you know, you followed some advice of a person in a bar and you end up with the triads having drinks. So it's probably a better spontaneous experience than that. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Which was on another Daddy East um, last episode, of course, when we went through our, uh, yeah, crazy nights out. Crazy nights out where, yeah, yeah not, not the best company to catch up with. But um, I think just the... Yeah, there's something about, and now that we're, you know, I I would love to have gotten tickets to the game tonight, but we'll definitely find ourselves in like just a local Madrid cafe with surrounded by people. And, um, you know, we were in um, Manchester at the time for the Euro where England was playing, um, Italy. playing Italy with all these things. But I think there's just something about, sport that can just i don't know the 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 uniqueness of it you just can't replicate with anything else because anything can happen and that's that's what i think i love about it and even better if you can get to a live game of just any form and just enjoy the the ambience and the, the crowds and everything so one of the things i want to do this year is definitely get to an english premier league game while i'm over uh, this side of the world I'll be and be a neutral supporter and just enjoy it. <laughs> I'll be very jealous of you when you get to do that. But uh, actually, my um, my wife and her father, both mad Melbourne supporters, they went to the first game of the season against the Bulldogs last Wednesday and the unfurling of the flag. And, yeah, my, my father-in-law was, you know, in tears because it was just so emotional of, you know, the flag after 57-odd years of not having one. So, yeah, live sport can bring out emotions in people and, you know, just the emotions of live sport. It's just an amazing thing to experience if you, yeah, if, it, if it's your thing and you, you get along to it. Definitely, definitely. And I think there's something about as well, um, you know, I've got a lot of live sport memories of just being a kid. And even if it is just like a local A-grade footy match or um, a bit of a tour pre-season where you get to meet the team afterwards and all those kind of things. I think, um, yeah, there's some really, really cool um experiences for kids for them to never forget to just go and see like the sporting heroes and everything um and i was very lucky in a in a past life to be an actual physio on afl grounds with afl teams and just that you know the there's so many people that whether they run water or the community people or the people that do the you know make the banners and all those kind of things you can just tell that there's a lot of people that this means a lot of things to. And I and I am really hoping that, you know, now that um, things are getting somewhat back to a new world where we're not all in lockdown, um, 
sport bounces back with yeah with a vengeance because there is some things that you just can't beat face to face and i think sport's one of them there's a lot of magic in it. I think it's a great place to wrap up for this week so you can go and enjoy Madrid. I remember to subscribe to Daddy's last night iTunes if you haven't already. And while you're there, please leave a review. Also tell your mates about the podcast, especially if they are guys. Most of all, thanks for listening. And we'll be back next week with another episode, or should I say serving, of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.